Hello everyone. This is the final video of this series, creating enemy ships and destroy them. First, let's find a pretab file named done enemy ship. Delete all scripts on the prefab. Change its name to enemy ship. Create an empty game object named enemy generator in hierarchy panel and add convert to entity script. Let's create a component called enemy prefab in the scripts folder. Add a game object type variable called prefab to hold enemy ship prefab. When finished, drag it into the inspector panel of the enemy generator. I just realized that the enemy ship might have sub objects that could not be converted to entity. Let's drag this prefab into the hierarchy panel, expand its hierarchy, and check. It's currently overlapped with the background quad. Let's set the y axis of the background quad to minus 10. Enemy ship sub objects include engine's effect and short sprung. Since ECS does not currently support animation and particle systems, and our demo does not include the enemy bullets instantiation, we only need the vehicle enemy ship object in child lists. Let's drag it to the prefab folder and create a prefab. Then delete the enemy ship in the hierarchy panel. Replace the prefab in the inspector panel of the enemy generator with the vehicle enemy ship prefab we just created. Go back to the VS system folder and create a graph code enemy generator. Create a query for enemy generator. Create an unupdate node. Pull out the enemy prefab component. Get the property of prefab variable. If some condition matches, we will instantiate something here. We can add the prefab variable to the source entity. Add a translation node. Switch mode to set component. We hope to be able to randomly generate the location of the enemy ship. However, VS2 doesn't contain random function of this drop. We can replace it in a simple way. Let's set a position of Z to 12, a little bit smaller than the camera view for easier observation. Set the condition to true and test this program. Well, the enemy ships are instantiated over time, but they were all generated in the same position. Let's generate the enemy ship using time delta time, corresponding to different locations at different times. We need to use modulo node and a range number, let's say 15, to generate a random lag series from 0 to 14. Subtract 7 from this series to create an array of minus 7 to 7. Connect this result to the X coordinate. We use a similar method to create a timer that generates a true value every 50 frames to control the generation speed of the enemy ship. Let's create a shared component data code enemy tag. Shared component means that many entities have the same value. I component data interface also works in this case. Under the instantiate node, let's add the enemy tag component we just created to this entity. The add component is used here because the entity just created does not have this component. Create a graph code enemy mover to control the movement of the enemy ship. Create a query that contains only the enemy tag and translation. Set the Z value to minus 0 0.1. We want each enemy ship to move down minus 0 0.1 units per frame. Drag out the enemy query entity and connect to the translate node. Let's test it. Yes, all the ships are moving correctly. Next, we need to boundary detection of enemy ships. Let's copy and paste the boundary detection nodes from the bullet mover graph, because they're almost the same. Drag out the translation of each query entity and connect its value to boundary detection macro node. There is another bug. Let's replace the old entity query with the current one. Let's test again. Enemy ships are generated, moved, and boundary check works. However, we found that our player ship couldn't move because there is a bug on my player control graph. I forgot to connect player query with translate node. When there is more than one entity with translation data in this scene, this node will not work. Let's go back to the bullet mover graph. 
If the bullet does not exceed the boundary, we will check if the bullet hit the enemy ship. Let's create a full all entity node that traverses all enemy ships for current bullet. Let's create an enemy query on the blackboard. We only need enemy tag and translation here. Connect the enemy query node to for all entities node. Pull out the current bullet's translation and the current enemy's translation. Let's use the distance node to calculate their distance. Use less than node to check if the distance is less than one unit. In this demo, we make a hypothesis. If the distance is less than one, the bullet hit the enemy ship. We need an if node here, but I found that we can't enter the node we need here. The alternative plan is that we create an empty stack here and add if node in the new empty stack. Dragging new nodes of main stack makes it easier to tell the program which logical nesting level we want to use, because a lot of looping statements are used here. If the distance is less than 1, we add a to be destroy component for the current entity, which is the enemy ship. In the drop down menu, we can find this tag in shared component data area. There is another mm -hmm. error need to fix. I connected the distance node directly with the translation node. It's wrong. Because the translation node does not output a flow 3 value, we need to use the get property node to get this flow 3 value. Save all, build all, and run it. Great, all enemy ships are instantiated correctly and they are moving forward and perform boundary detection while player ship can also move and shoot and bullets can destroy enemies. VS2.5 is released today. New features such as random node are added in. Check the link below this video to download a new version of VS tool. Both Draft 4 and Draft 5 environment are compatible with this tutorial. Okay, hope you already learned how to use VS2. Don't forget to subscribe my channel if you like it. And at last, I would like you to comment um, on this video and what other things you want to learn next. So I might consider start working on my next video based on your suggestion. So wish all of my fans all the best and have fun along your learning journey. Goodbye.